hello. Um, we're looking at my horizontal boring mill. Um, and I had a, a guy who watches some of my videos and I watch his videos, um, ask me about the draw bar in this machine. This machine comes with a power draw bar and he was curious about um, how it worked and what type of fittings it needed uh, in the actual tools that were going in the spindle in order to work. So I thought I'd just make a quick video of, of the draw bar and how it works. Um, this machine has an NMTB40 taper in the milling spindle, sorry, in the boring spindle. And obviously that's this type of holder there. Um, <clears throat> the uh, power draw bar is run by those two buttons. And as I've just written in marker, one is to unclamp, one is to clamp. And the actual operation of it is very straightforward. You just take the tool, put it in, push the button. I don't know if I'm going to engage. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Anyways, you put it in, press the clamp button, and there. You hear that hammering. They tell you let it hammer three times or so, and then it's seated properly. So that's in there and ready to use. Take it out. You press the unclamp button. And this doesn't shoot it out. There we go. And there, it's out. Uh, the draw bar is good in that it doesn't have any um, bayonet fittings or um, adapters, like pull stud type fittings like you get on CNC machines. It simply uses the 5 8 11 thread in the back of all NMTB40 holders. You have to remember that. I got burnt. I bought a couple of what I thought were NMTB40 holders off eBay. They're beautiful Swiss made end mill holders and they actually had a metric thread in them so I couldn't use them. But um, inside, you can see in there, you'll see the bolt or the thread, the male thread. And there you can see that's the unclamp and the clamp. So it's really just that simple. It turns one way or it turns the other. Um, just behind that um, male thread, it the diameter increases and forms a shoulder, and that part is all hardened and ground. And then in the boring spindle, there's a mating shoulder. And so what happens is that um, thread acts like a short bolt. And, um, you know, when you have manual draw bars and machines, the... Uh, the nut or the, the shoulder that the draw bar pulls against is usually located at the back of the machine. Um, in this case, you know, the distance between the thread and the shoulder is probably only about an inch. So it's a very um, rigid coupling. There's not really any twisting. There's not really any um, stretching of it. Um, so it, it, it holds quite well. Um, you know, in this machine, you would need a draw bar, I don't know, five feet long, probably, in order to do that. And if the shoulder is at the back end, you would get a lot of stretch in that draw bar and a lot of twist while you're trying to tighten it. So the actual clamping portion of it is very short. It's just behind the tool. And then that part is attached to a tube and that tube fits uh, over another tube and it creates a telescoping drive shaft the draw bar is actually like a telescoping drive shaft and there's keys in it that transfer the torque from one to the other. And um, the reason for that is because this spindle moves. So in order for that spindle to come out, the draw bar has to get longer. Um, there's one way you could do it. You could make it so that the draw bar just disconnects from the... Um, the, essentially the bolt part of the draw bar and then you would have to retract this back in to re-engage that with the draw bar that's one way that's how the air powered ones on bridge ports and that work and on those ones you can only use the draw bar when the spindle's fully retracted with this setup you can use the draw bar anywhere along its length you can eject and clamp tools no matter where the boring spindle is and that's important because you can do jobs with these machines where 
you may get your spindle through a small hole on the outside of a gear case and then inside the gear case in line of that hole is a bigger hole that you have to bore out and um, the spindle may be the only thing that fits through the outer hole so you put it through and then once you get it inside the gear case then you clamp a boring head in bore the bigger interior hole then you have to remove the boring head and then you have to retract the spindle through the small hole so you get situations like that on boring mills and you want to be able to remove the tools anywhere along the travel and by having a telescoping drawbar you can do that um the drawbar comes back to this section of the outboard support and this is the motor that drives it <clears throat> and there's a small gear train here two or three gears that transfer the motion over to the drawbar um Right in about here is a clutch, and it's a, a electric clutch. And um, this machine is all electromechanically controlled. So it comes with this electrical cabinet, which is full of relays and various electronic items, all of which essentially run clutches and power motors on this machine. So what happens is, <clears throat> This machine does not have a clutch on the spindle. If you want the spindle to turn, you have to turn the motor on. That's the drive motor there. If you want the spindle to stop, you turn the motor off. So as soon as you hit the power button to start the spindle, the clutch that's in here disengages and the power drawbar buttons are disconnected from the electrical system. They become inoperative. So you can't eject or try and clamp a tool while the spindle's rotating. By disengaging the drawbar through a clutch when the spindle's turning what happens is the gear train and the motor aren't back driven by the spindle so that reduces wear and tear and power loss and heating and things like that uh, as soon as you shut the spindle motor off this clutch here re-engages connects the drawbar to the drawbar motor and the drawbar buttons become operational again um, uh, as i mentioned before this is the motor the motor itself is actually back about here. It's one of those um, like heavy duty, almost like a starter motor on a car. It's meant for short duration, that high torque type thing. It's a three phase motor. It's not DC or anything like that. Right in about this area is a planetary uh, gear set, which reduces the speed of the motor down to the speed you want the drawbar to turn. And then right in around here is a, a dog clutch. And the dog clutch is, has two dogs on it. And they are um, not very deep and they're ramped. And then there's a spring, which is controlled by this knob here, a spring that forces them together. And so what happens is when you engage the motor to clamp or unclamp the let's say just to clamp the tool in the dogs are engaged and it spins the drawbar as soon as the tool seats in the taper the drawbar suddenly becomes very hard to turn and eventually uh you know the torque output of the motor goes up and eventually there's enough torque on the dog clutch that the um ramps uh, create enough force to overcome the spring load that's holding them together and the dog disengages turns 180 degrees and as it's going by the next slot it slightly engages before it gets ejected again and it creates a hammering effect and that's that hammering you heard when I was installing and ejecting the tool there um, so that creates a bit of a hammering effect it also prevents the motor from stalling out which can be hard on it um, so it'll hammer a bit to seat the tool tighter and then it'll do the same thing when it's ejecting. It'll hammer a bit to break the tool loose. Um, like I said, you can control the, the, the amount of torque by adjusting the, uh, this screw, which compresses or re relaxes the spring. <clears throat> um, I had this all ripped apart when I rebuilt this boring mill. I stripped this motor right down and cleaned all the grease out. This case is they tell you to have it packed full of grease. So I took it all apart, washed it all out. Parts looked really good, barely any wear on the dog clutches. Packed it right full of a 
you know, good synthetic grease of the right consistency. And um, it just, it wouldn't work. Uh, the dogs wouldn't disengage from each other. It would just stall the motor when I tried to seat a tool or tried to eject it. And I thought I'd buggered something up or maybe it had never worked before. Um, and then what happened was I kept trying it and over time, this is where you're supposed to grease it. Grease was coming out of this hole and a decent amount. And uh, I, I found out over time, I, I just had too much grease in there. And once it had spit enough grease out, it started working fine. And now it works really good and grease is no longer coming out. So fairly soon I'll start actually greasing it uh, again as the manual tells you to. But um, yeah, that's the, um, that's the power draw bar in this machine. And it makes using this machine very, very handy. I just finished all these parts and it involved drilling these two holes and they had to be in line because there's going to be bushings pressed in here and then a pin goes through there and then drilling and tapping this hole for a retainer bolt for the pin um, I did 45 of these and in order to do them I had to use all of those tools some of them more than once each for each um, part and you know, there was a lot of tool changes just to do a part. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tools there. Some of them I had to change more than once. And I was doing eight or 10 tool changes per part. Now, if you did do that by hand, it would have added a huge amount of time to the job. Um, and, <clears throat> and a lot more effort walking around the machine to loosen the bolt, etc. cetera. Um, by building this little stand and having the tools right there, it, I didn't have to even move. I just had to pivot on my feet to do tool changes. So it went, it went um, really quickly. I didn't get any footage of doing all these parts, um, but what I did, I took a short video of doing the back chamfering on here and here. I was able to just chamfer these in my drill press like, like you normally would, but being inside faces, you can't get at them so I uh, I use this tool here and uh, sharpened that tool there and I was able to back channel for both sides in one setup so I'll show that short video right after this anyways I hope that was a good explanation um, uh, yeah <laughs> that's how it works anyways thanks for watching